Hey everybody, it's Dr. Guy, author of The Dissertation Warrior and founder of The Dissertation Mentor Accelerator Program, and this is a short version of a longer masterclass that I have in my Accelerator Program, and actually a shorter version of a 20-ish minute video that's here on YouTube. In fact, if this video perks your interest based upon what we're discussing, the longer class is available just simply by clicking the link inside the comments or inside the, the video description section below where you'll find a much longer version from a much younger version of me uh, about this topic. And so this is how to choose a theoretical or conceptual framework in your dissertation, your doctoral thesis. And this is a question that I get a lot from doctoral students because a theoretical or conceptual framework is something that is not necessarily trained or taught in many doctoral programs. A lot of candidates simply want to know, what is a conceptual framework? What is a theoretical framework? The basic answer to that is a theoretical or conceptual framework is a lens, a lot like these glasses, through which you're looking at the problem that is the focus of your study. So right now, I want you to think about what is your study, what is your study focusing upon? And more specifically than that, what problem is your study planning on trying to understand. You have many different choices about the lenses, or the lens, I should say, through which you are looking at that problem. So for example, if you are looking at successful nurses, there are many different ways that you could look at successful nurses. You could be interested in the leadership of successful nurses, the leadership of themselves. Uh, you could be interested in the way that others led them. You could be interested in their needs and how their needs were met as nurses, becoming successful nurses. You could also be interested in the mentoring that they received. These are all types of lenses that you could use and ones that you could select as a theoretical or a conceptual framework. One of the follow-up questions that immediately you might have is, is there a difference between a theoretical and a conceptual framework? In the most strictest sense, they're not the same thing, but at most colleges, most universities, they're regarded almost as the same thing. The most strictest definition would hold that a theoretical framework is something that is chosen. It's a theory or a model that exists already in the world today, one that you could pick right off the shelf and say, this, this theory or model is the one that I'm going to be using as the lens through which to look at my researchable problem. Whereas a conceptual framework then is to say, on the shelf of all theories and models that exist, there doesn't exist one that is satisfactory to me. One that captures all the elements that I am interested in, in my research. So therefore, I am going to go out and build a conceptual framework. I'm going to go out and I'm going to reach and I'm going to grab all the concepts from other theories and models that are out there in the world. I'm going to create almost my own Frankenstein monster of theories by building one myself. So if you're going to hold yourself to that very strict definition, and I really don't recommend you do, conceptual frameworks are built where theoretical frameworks are selected. So what does a theoretical or a conceptual framework look like in action? So if you imagine, using the example we were discussing a moment ago of successful nurses, if you adopted a framework like Bass and Ovilo's 1995 full range of leadership model, they use, I think there's about four elements of transformational leadership that are discussed there. You could ask your successful nurses about those four four elements. So notice what happens is you have your, your researchable problem, which is how do these nurses become successful? And you pop on this lens of transformational leadership. And so you ask these nurses questions about their transformational leadership, or if you are interested, the transformational leadership used upon them or enacted around them. And notice how the theory that you chose provides a focus for your study. You could have asked these nurses about anything, but transformational leadership provides the specific focus that you're gonna be using. Likewise, if you were to be using something like Maslow's hierarchy of need, uh, the hierarchy of needs, you know, if you imagine the pyramid, 
you could have chosen many different things to focus upon when you were talking to these successful nurses, but you're going to focus on each of the levels of the hierarchy. So that way you can understand how each of their needs were met as successful nurses, perhaps as they were developing in the nursing field. So notice how, again, a conceptual or a theoretical framework provides a focus of all the things you could be discussing about these successful nurses. This provides a focus for you and for your study. So how then should you write about your theoretical or conceptual framework? Every university has a different way of approaching theoretical and conceptual frameworks. In fact, it'd be more accurate to say that every doctoral program has a different way of approaching this topic. Some doctoral programs require you to do a theoretical framework. Some doctoral programs will require you to do a conceptual framework. Some doctoral programs will say that qualitative studies use a conceptual framework and quantitative studies use a theoretical framework. It really depends on where you are. And so it behooves you then to go into the literature, that is the, the dissertations from your program, and find out what the norm is there. Look across many dissertations. Do you find that every single one of them is using a conceptual framework that was built or do you find that they're all using theoretical frameworks? Or are they potentially, and, and quite often, just using these terms interchangeably? My hope would be that you'll find a norm, something that you can base your own work upon. So the natural final question is, what model should I be using? What conceptual framework or theoretical framework should I use? And the answer is, whatever you choose, you should choose it from a list of many theories or models that you have gathered in your time delving into the literature. What a lot of candidates do, and not necessarily a bad thing, is they find a theoretical or conceptual framework that they like from the literature. This is a good move, but that alone, your preference is not enough to convince your chair that this is the right theoretical or conceptual framework for you. You're gonna need to provide a whole list of potential frameworks that you could have used. And the only way to do that is to build a list. So go out into the literature and build a list of at least 10 theoretical or conceptual frameworks, models, theories out there in the world that could have been used for your study. My hope is that when you go to your chair, you will have the entire arsenal of all your hard work that you've done in your literature search, that you've gathered all the theoretical and conceptual frameworks that you've come across to create a menu of sorts from which you've selected yours. You're making the timely, prudent, well-considered decision to use this theoretical framework or this conceptual framework because of all the options that were out there, you weighed them and you said, look, Dr. Chair, here's what I could have used. Here's another one I could have used. But this framework, this theoretical framework, this conceptual framework is just right for me. And here's those reasons why it's just right. It's not just an opinion you have. It's something that you have developed because you've put the time in that's required. I'm Dr. Guy, and I run the world's most comprehensive online dissertation training for doctoral students, the Dissertation Mentor Accelerator Program. I hope that you'll join me. This video is the shorter version of a longer YouTube video, which is available just by going down to the details below, and you'll see the link first thing. If you're interested in going through the huge masterclass that I have on this topic, consider joining the Dissertation Mentor Accelerator Program, which is also linked down there in the details of this video. It's an honor to know you. Please do subscribe to this channel and click the notification button if you'd like more videos about how to do great things in your doctoral writing.